Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Tim Kennebrew. I'm uh, associate pastor at Believers New Life Ministries under the leadership of uh, Pastor and, uh, Lady Marvel Williams. Uh, we all give it up for the leaders that are here this morning, Pastor Sharp and his wife, Pastor Williams and Sister Williams. Hallelujah. Uh, I was asked, Pastor asked me to share uh, with you uh, briefly my perspective uh, as it relates to uh, praying for the first family, as it relates to uh, honoring leadership and respecting leadership. Uh, I, I, can, I, can, I can go on and on, but I won't. Uh, but there's, there's, very, uh, there's a lot of scripture that uh, correlates with this, this conference and this, this seminar uh, today, and, and it's very important. I'm, I'm shocked that this place is not filled uh, due to the nature of what's going to be taught and what's going to be shared this morning. Um, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a living example. Oh, I said I wasn't going to do this. Whew. Wow. You know, that, that song, We Need the Glory, as, as, as I watch what was going on and as I listened to the words of that song, uh, the Holy Spirit took my mind back. He said, you know, if you, if you reaccount the times when God's glory was manifested, it was as a result of a leader. See, it was, it was a result of a leader, Moses, then Solomon. It was a leader doing what God told them to do, and that blessing or that glory manifested to the people because of what the leader had done. So, 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 so yes, we need his glory, but in order to experience God's glory, you have to honor leadership. You have to be willing to submit to leadership. We, if we can look just at, at, a, at a few scriptures as I share this, this perspective, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm well taught. My leader has taught me how to, how to, how to flow in the, in the spirit. And, and uh, you know, I, I'm not going to say anything without uh, having scripture to back it up. You know, that's how I've been taught. Uh, so, so, so forgive me if I, if I tell you to go here or go there just for a few moments. Uh, Psalms 112, we, we talked from this passage of scripture uh, just the other night. And, 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 you know, we, we read Psalms 112, and, you know, our favorite passage of Scripture, if it's not, you know, it's one of your favorite. You know, wealth and riches shall be in your house. Let's look at verse uh, number 1, Psalms 112, and then, and then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to continue to share my perspective. But I, I have to look at this passage of Scripture, and I'll, I'll give you several passages of Scriptures to look at uh, that you can read in your own, own time. Psalms 112, verse number one. A lot of times, I, you know, we, we jump past verse number one, Pastor Sharp, and we jump down to verse number, number three. But there's a lot that's, that's said here in verse number one. Uh, it says, praise you the Lord. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord, that delighteth greatly in his commandments. Let's stop at this, this passage of scripture. Let's stop right here on this verse. It says, blessed is the man that feareth the Lord, and delightly great is it, greatly in his commandments. You know, in the body of Christ, we sometimes have it misconstrued, sister, that, that fearing the Lord means just fearing the Lord. But in this word, fear of the Lord, or in this, this phrase, fear the Lord, there's a lot that's being said there. Because uh, uh, God revealed to us by revelation. You know, we believe we're all ambassadors to Christ, right? Second Chronicles 20 and 20 says, and you write, write that scripture down, it says that believe in the Lord your God, so shall you be established. Believe his prophets, so shall you prosper. So here it says, fear the Lord. Blessed is the man that feared the Lord. And so it says over in, in, in 2 Chronicles 20 and 20 that if you believe his prophets, you'll prosper. So, so God makes a differentiation between himself and those who represent him. We're all ambassadors for Christ. But God has selected and anointed and appointed a select few of good men and women that he's chosen without your approval, that he's established over, over ministries and churches without talking to you about it. And he said, if you believe them, you'll prosper. So, so here it says, blessed is the man that feareth the Lord. So fearing the Lord has more than just, you know, this misconception of, you know, I fear the Lord, I'm, you know, I'm, you know, I, I, I reverence him, I respect him, 
uh, I, I, I believe what he says to me. Well, in order to fear the Lord properly, there has to be uh, a reverence and respect for godly leadership. So it says, blessed is the man that fears the Lord. So, so, so we, can, we can input right there in that passage of Scripture, you know, and I'm not adding anything to it. I'm just, I'm just clarifying what, what this, this phrase means, fear the Lord. You have to fear those who represent him. God is not showing up at your house in, uh, in, 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 in his natural form talking to you. What he does, he establishes leaders who he appoints and who he anoints and gives watch over our souls for us. According to Hebrews 14, uh, 13 and 17. So, so, so our leaders are, are established to watch over our souls for us. So that means I can't watch for my soul for myself. So in order for me to fear the Lord properly, I have to, I have to reverence and I have to respect the ones that he's anointed and appointed to, to lead me and to watch over my soul and to speak into my life. So, so here it says, praise you the Lord, blesses the man that feared the Lord, that delighted greatly in his commandments. So fearing the Lord doesn't just mean I, I reverence and respect what God has said in his word. I reverence and respect the order that he's established. I reverence and respect the leaders that he's, he's anointed and that he's given oversight over me. One of, one of the things that uh, has been such a blessing to me is, is that as a member and as a citizen of the kingdom and a member of the body of Christ, that the leader that God gave, gave oversight over me, I had nothing to do with. I, I, didn't, I, couldn't, I didn't choose that leader. God called me to a place. He called me to, to, a, to, a, to a ministry. He calls me to a church, to a work. And, and he had already established who he wanted. It says, he said, God give, gives us pastors, right, uh, not according to my heart, but according to his heart. So, so, so I know God loves me, right? We know God loves us. So the, so the pastors and the leaders that God has given us uh, have been established by God. And because they've been established by God, and I know God loves me, I have to, I have to come to the conclusion that the leaders that he's established, they love me also. So, so because of that, I, I choose. I make the choice. Because you have to make a choice when it comes to honoring leadership and respect. It. You have to make a choice. I choose. I choose to submit myself. I choose to respect. I choose to honor the leaders that God has given me. And man, what a blessing it is. Ooh, glory. What a blessing it is when a, when a man or woman recognizes that it doesn't take anything away from you as a person, as a man, as a woman, uh, as a human being, as a child of God. It doesn't take anything away from you to submit to leadership. Knowing, knowing, let, look over, let's look over at Hebrews uh, 13. I just had a, a, a manifestation happen in my life uh, that, you know, I had something to do with it, but it wasn't, it wasn't because of me. I recognize that. I recognize that it was because I've made a choice to submit to leadership. I made a choice to, to follow godly leadership. Let's look at Hebrews 13. Hebrews 13, verse number 17. Now recognize this is this is a New Testament scripture. This is this is uh this is this is this is a, a different different wording from Job 36 and 11. You know, Job 36 and 11 is one of my favorite too. It says, if you will obey. But here, here, Hebrews 13 and 17, there's no if there. There's there's no if. It says, obey them. Obey them. 
that have the rule over you. God, God established it. We, we recognize God established it. And submit yourselves. Y'all see that? But you have to make the choice to obey and submit. There's a command given. This is a command. But you have to make the choice and the decision that you're going to submit and that you're going to obey. Look at, look, at this, look at this next part. For they, those that God has, has established and appointed and anointed to uh, lead you and has given oversight over your souls, they watch for your souls. They don't watch your paycheck. They don't watch your time. You know, like your, like your bosses do. Uh, a lot of us, we give more, more respect and, and reverence and honor to our bosses on our jobs. You know, how many of y'all get to work late? I'm glad that y'all are honest. Y'all get to work late sometimes? But you have to give an account for why you're late, right? You're going to make sure your boss knows why you're late. Most of the time, you're going you're gonna to either call or send a text or do prior. How many of y'all have, have come to church late? All right, I'm not, I'm not going to throw, I'm not throwing any stones. I'm just doing a poll. Uh, the question that you ought to ask yourself at this point is, do I give my leaders the same type of respect that I give my, my, my employer? Because their job is, is much uh, greater because it says here they watch for our souls as they that must give an account that they may do it with joy and not with grief for that is unprofitable to us so so knowing that you have to make a decision we have to make a decision that it's very important that we we respect leadership that we honor leadership, uh, and there's a blessing. There's a blessing here. Let's look at the flip. If they give an account to God and it's not with grief, that means it's profitable to me. And, and it has benefit in this life and in the life to come. But let's, let's talk about this life for, for a moment. You know, I, I, I'm, I've served for the last five years at, at my school as assistant principal. Uh, when I applied for the job, there's you know, other guys that are more qualified than myself uh, on paper to, uh, to be in that position, who interviewed for the position. But God chose me. You know, uh, the, the favor that, that God uh, showed me with the staff and with the board and with everyone in the community, God chose me. Well, here recently, I, I, I talked to my man of God. I, said, well, you know, the principal position is coming open. Uh, I've served this five years and, you know, and uh, kind of got satisfied with where I was. Uh, but I, I've, I, I've been receiving the word. I've been taking the word that, that, that's been coming to me, you know, and uh, making the adjustments that, because, you know, the word, when the word comes, you, 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 have, to make, you, have, you have to make some adjustments. You know, it says over there in Psalms 112 and 1, it says that you delight greatly. You know, I, that, my translation of that is I don't get mad if the word that my, my leaders share with me and that they speak to me, uh, step on my toes, uh, show me where I'm going. In the, I don't get mad. I, del, I choose to delight greatly. In, that's what that delight greatly is there. You know, we can get down to 112 and 3, but you can't get to 112 and 3 without going through, through 1 and 2. So, so, so I make the choice. I make, me and my wife, we don't talk about what we don't understand or, or what we may not necessarily, I mean, I can't say we don't like it because we just choose to like it. We choose to receive it. You know what I mean? It's not so much a, a not like anymore. It's, I make the choice. It's, it's coming for my good. It's coming because God loves me. It's coming because my leaders love me. And I know that. It's, there's no question. There's no question. In, there shouldn't be any question in your, your heart at this point about how your leaders feel about you and how much they love you. If you know like I know, I bet they've done some things for you outside of this church that you, you needed and that you deserved and, or that you didn't deserve, that they just did because they recognized that you had a need. Or, or let's, 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 look, at, let's look, look at this, and I'm going to finish my story, and I'm going to sit down. 
know, that's one of the things that, that, that I'm learning, I'm having to learn how to do is, you know, control my emotions when I, when I, when I minister. It's hard. It's hard for me right now, you know, so, you know, because I, I know what the Lord has done for me. So, you know. Obey them that have the rule over you. That's a command. And submit yourselves. For they watch for your souls. As they that must. Y'all see that? That's, that's a, they have a job to do. They must give an account. That they may do it with joy and not with grief. But it, for that is unprofitable to you. That is unprofitable to you. So, so I, was, I, was, I was sharing my story about, you know, how I got to where I am. The word, the word came to me. It came to me through my leader. I received the word. Sometimes it, it caused me to have to make some major adjustments, some major moves. You know, I realized through a word that came through my leader that I was sitting back being passive, quit being passive. You know, uh, you know move. Do those things that God has called you to do. Uh, so here recently, uh, the, the principal position came open at, at the high school where I, I've, I've been serving for the last five years. And, uh, and I'm going to just be, be honest and candid and forward with you. Uh, I hadn't finished my master's. I've been, I'm working on it. I'm in classes and all that stuff. And, uh, you know, I've been told in time past that, you know, hey, you, don't, you, you need not apply because, you know, you hadn't fulfilled that requirement. And so, you know, I just kind of sat back. And, uh, and so after, after consulting with my leader, uh, the decision was made that I would go ahead and apply. And so uh, I applied, and I think, I think there was 10 other people that applied. They all, you know, had, had everything squared away. And, uh, but when you, when, you, when, you, when you submit and you respect and you honor leadership, it don't matter. It don't matter. And, and I'm not speaking by faith. I, I mean, the, 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 the manifestation has occurred. I mean, it's done. It doesn't matter what anyone else has to say about it. You can take the word that God speaks to you through your leaders to the bank. You can take it. I'm telling you, you can take it for what it is. And, and 1 Thessalonians 2.13 Y'all know that passage of Scripture? You know, we thank God without ceasing that, you know, when you receive the word that you heard of us, you received it not as the word of mere men, but as it is in truth, the word of God. And, and, and when you do that, it says in that passage, let's look over there. Let's, let's look over there. Real quick. I hope I'm not taking up too much time, Pastor Shaw. First Thessalonians 2.13, it says, For this cause also thank we God without ceasing. This is the leaders talking. Y'all know who's talking. This, this, this is the leaders. They've, they've been sharing the word. They've been telling them what God has given them to say. And, you know, uh, and, and the people are receiving. When you receive the word of God, which you heard of us, you received it not as the word of mere men. Or word of men and Amplified, it says mere men. Because your leaders are not mere men or mere women. But as it is in truth, the word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe. Let's look at that verse out of Amplified Bible. 1 Thessalonians 2.13 out of Amplified Bible says, And we also especially thank God continually for this. Man, look at, look at what it does to your leaders. Your leaders are, are excited and they're, they're happy when you receive the word that God has given them to make your life better. The word that comes to us through our leaders is designed to make our lives better. So it says that when you receive the message of God, which you heard from us, you welcomed it. You welcomed it. You know, it's not just, you, wasn't, you didn't just receive it, you welcomed it. It's like with, with open arms. I'm taking what they're saying because I know it's coming out of a heart of love, out of God's love for me and out of their love for me. And they're telling me what God is wanting them to tell me because they want my life to be better. And God has revealed to them what I need to know 
for my life to be better. So it says that you welcomed it not as the word of mere men, but as it truly is, the word of God. You didn't, you didn't look at them as just Pastor Sharp and Sister Sharp. Uh, you didn't just look at them as, you know, well, that, they a man just like I'm a man. No, no, no. No, not the same. Not the same. Not the same. Wow. You welcomed it, not as the word of mere men, but as it truly is the word of God, which effectually, which is effectually at work in you who believe. Look at this last portion of the scripture. Exercising. Talking about God's word. Exercising is superhuman power in those who adhere to, trust in, and rely on it. But you have to receive it through the leader. You know, you can go in your prayer closet and you can pray. I, I, I hope that you do that often. But God ain't going to speak to you a whole lot in your prayer closet. If that was the reason, he wouldn't have gave you a leader. See, it, see, it takes, I can say it because I've, I've humbled myself to the point where I realize that I don't have to go to my prayer closet to try to hear from God. No. Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday, casual conversation or serious conversation. If my man of God make a suggestion to me, I recognize that that suggestion come from God. Yeah. See, y'all, y'all ain't, y'all, y'all not saying anything. That, that suggestion, because when you have leaders of such caliber, like Pastor Sharp and Sister Sharp and Pastor and Sister Williams, they're not making any moves. Your leaders won't go buy a car without consulting God. Your leaders are not going to speak at any church just because somebody called them without consulting God. Your leaders are not going to even speak to you what you want to know at that time if you ask them a question without in their heart or at a different time saying, okay, I'll get back to you without consulting God because they understand the charge that's been given to them. And so in the body of Christ, it's time that we recognize that, man, when you got good leaders, you recognize it. They understand. They know. So when they do speak, I understand, man, I, I've been around them and I've, I've received uh, instructions and directions to the point and I've seen the results occur in my life to the point where I know they ain't, there's no question, no doubt in my mind whether or not they heard from God or spoke to me what God said. I know it without a shadow of a doubt and can't nobody tell me any different. Can't no bootleg preacher down the street tell me anything different. Some of y'all been listening to some bootleg preachers. Listen to your leaders. You have leaders that hear from God for you. And, and your leaders are not going to lead you wrong. Where you are, I, I can guarantee your life is better than what it's ever been. Because I know my life is better. Y'all got good leaders. We, all, we have good leaders. So it says here, you receive the word not as the word of mere men. And, and because you believed it, it says it's ex it exercises its superhuman power in you who adhere to, trust, and rely on it. So let me, let me go back to my story, and I'm going I'm to sit down. I applied for the principal position. Ten people applied. Five people were interviewed. After I interviewed, uh, you know, I was asked a series of questions by a bunch of different people, and I made it a choice not to worry I chose not to worry about uh, the, the outcome because I knew the outcome. Because God had already spoke to me. God had already told me what it was going to be through my leader. He said, you know, you got to, you got to, you know, my leader said, he, he said, you have, pastor said, you have to mark certain things for the glory of God. And so that was right along that time that word came. So I took that word and applied it immediately. I said, okay. I, you know, I consulted with him, made the decision that we we're going to, I was going to apply and then I said, I marked this one for the glory. God's going to get the glory out of this one. Yes, sir. Everybody else is complete with their masters and, you know, have all this stuff in, in order and all this. And uh, I got a call yesterday and had to go meet with the superintendent. And she told me, said, look, the committee selected you. <laughs> so 
See, but I know why. I know why. I know why the favor is working in my life. I know why God is exercising his superhuman power in my life. I know why. I, I know why these things are happening. Because this, I, I see it in the word. I'm taught, I've been taught it. My leader has taught me, look, if you, if you receive the word, if you receive the word, man, and it doesn't take anything from you. I'm not telling you not to go pray and, and seek God. I'm not, I'm not telling you not to do that. But you have, to, you have to be mindful to consult. See, in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. You know, that's, that was in the Old Testament. I would say in the counsel of your leaders, there is safety. You ain't got to go to a whole bunch of folk. You know, the Old Testament got you thinking you got to go to, you know, this one and that one and the other. You know, and, and I understood what the context of that scripture. But, but in, in, in this day and age, and in this house, and in Believer's New Life Ministries, you have leaders that, that, that seek God, that, man, your leader's up all time of the night praying for you. Sometimes it's not, it's not joyous. A lot of times it's not joyous. You know, my, one of my, one of my uh, greatest ex expectations or hopes is that uh, anytime my man and woman of God have to go to God for me, they can do it with joy in their heart, knowing that I'm, 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 I'm doing my best to do everything that they're, they're instructing us to do, uh, they're telling us to do, uh, that they're suggesting to us to do. Uh, I'm, I'm listening and I'm receiving the word that comes to me through them. I recognize them as, as God's representatives because everybody don't speak on behalf of God. You may be an ambassador, but that don't mean you speak on behalf of G-O-D or Jehovah. You're an ambassador for Christ, but your leaders speak on behalf of the Almighty, the Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So, 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 so let's, not, let's not get it confused when we start talking about, you know, well, I'm an ambassador for God, Christ. I represent him in the earth. But you, at this point in your life and where you are, you don't represent God to, to anyone else. Your leader represents God to you. Y'all got quiet. So you mean to tell me that I ain't making God out of your pastor. I'm saying your leader represents God. Represents. Represents God. So, so because my leader represents God, the same respect and honor I give to God, I give to my leader. Now, I worship God. I praise him. But I do give honor and respect. See, y'all. And pastor know even now, if he, if he raises his hand and he make a motion that he ready to go, I'm done. And nothing else to say. Because I respect my leaders to, to that degree. So, so, so in closing, I, I want to leave this with you. Know who your leaders are. Your leaders are the representatives of God to you. And the word that they speak to you is the word of God. And if you'll take that word and believe it and apply it to your life and not get mad at it, choose to delight greatly in that word. You can, you can bank on wealth and riches being in your house. You can bank on God exercising his superhuman power in your life because you honor, respect, and you reverence leadership. Thank you for this opportunity, Pastor Sharp. Uh, thank you. God bless y'all.